Hi, I'm Wes Wood, the income guy and founder and president of Wood Financial Group. And for nearly 20 years, I've specialized in helping hardworking Tennesseans just like you reach their retirement goals through income-based financial strategies. And if you're looking for the right solutions to achieve your own financial goals, you're in luck. At any time during today's show, you can reach out to me at retiretv.com or by calling 855-776-0614. Retirement is no game, but preparing for retirement is, in many ways, a matter of knowing the right answers to the right questions. And we're gonna share the, some of those questions today and let you take the retirement readiness quiz. We'll also talk about why each of these five questions is so important. Number one, do you know your retirement goals? Two, are you mentally ready to retire? Three, do you have a plan for Social Security? Four, do you have a plan for required minimum distributions? And five, have you made the shift from growth to income? And Davis Grant joins us again this week. He's an investing for income specialist with over 30 years in the business. He's also a best-selling author and a TV host. But first, let's take a closer look at the first two quiz questions. Do you know your goals? And are you mentally ready? You know, we're programmed to think at 65, that's the normal retirement age for retirement. And practically speaking, it's reasonable. First, you're eligible to take Social Security. You got Medicare, it kicks in. And you're still young enough to be fairly active. But the reality is, some people retire much earlier than 65, and some retire much later than 65. It all depends on your individual situation and your personal readiness. Not just financial readiness, but your mental and emotional readiness as well. Usually that has to do a lot with your relationship with your job. Some people love their work, can't imagine being fulfilled by anything else. And if you still feel that way when you're 65 or even 70 years old, you're probably not ready to retire regardless of your financial situation. But if your job has become a grind and you're looking forward to retirement, well, you may not be ready to retire either. People who just retire to get away from work often end up regretting it because they're not sure how to fill in all those empty hours now that they're retired. That's why it's so important to have the right answer to that first quiz question, do I know my retirement goals? And the right answer is yes. Think about it. If you know your goal is to buy a boat and to sail that boat around the world, you know specifically how much money you need to have in order to gauge your retirement readiness. You know you need to save a certain amount to purchase this boat, you need to have enough income to fund the trip, plus you know you need to be physically and mentally prepared for it. By the same token, if your goal includes more conventional things like a lot of my clients, golfing, fishing, traveling, spending time with grandkids, they also need to, you need to also give you a retirement readiness gauge. And this gauge applies to both your financial readiness and your mental readiness. It may seem trivial, but the reality is so many people aren't mentally ready to end up and end up struggling retirement regardless of their financial readiness. But right now, I want to welcome David Scranton. He's the founder of Sound Income Strategies and the founder of the Retirement Income Store. Hey, Dave, thanks again for being back on the show this week. Oh, uh, Wes, it's great to see you again, as usual. Yes, sir. And, you know, I have to ask you because you always talk about the right and wrong ways to set mm -hmm. goals. So people sometimes get a little too mathematical when doing that. Mm -hmm. um, you care to elaborate on that for just a moment? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's always good to, to take people through a goal setting process or have people sit down and, and think about their goals in retirement. There's different ones. There's have goals, there's become goals, and there's do goals. And until somebody can really think about what they want to do in retirement, it may be a good way to go about thinking about goals and what they want to be doing is use what we call a sensory specific way and just write down their goals and really think about them and imagine what it's like to be retired, imagine what things they want to be doing then and really only then can we put dollars behind it to fulfill those things that they want to be doing, becoming or maybe even having. Now I know you said before that it what that does, the sensory specific aspect of mm -hmm. it, is it really helps motivate people mm -hmm. to make the sacrifices necessary to work toward achieving their retirement goals. But, but why does it have that additional psychological benefit? Well, it gives the why. 
And if you have a why, then it can actually give you the motivation to achieve those goals. And, and I've seen people take the time to think about their goals and they realize, hey, I need to maybe work a little bit longer. I need to save a little bit more. Or maybe I need to change a few different things. But the why is a big factor when it comes to you know, a, obtaining those goals and, and what those goals are really important to them. You know, younger folks, their goals are maybe just to have something. You know, for them, it could be to have a sports car. So to print off a picture of it and put it in front of the computer and they want to have that. Well, younger people are motivated by those material things. Where a lot of my clients and folks entering retirement, it's more about what they want to become and what they want to do, which can be a little bit more complicated on setting a, a budget behind it. But those, those become and do goals are typically more aligned with folks that are you know, older or in retirement. So you get somebody who says, you know, that's wet, gee, Wes, that's great, but I can't even think that far ahead. I just want to get to retirement. It's going to be in a few years. And, and I'm, not, I'm not that creative mm -hmm. to think about my goals in a sensory specific way. Mm -hmm. Well, what do you suggest they well, do? Well, I mean, it, you can, you know, a lot of people that are that are working and have income coming in, they're pretty comfortable. So, if you need to start with the mathematical side, that's okay. Uh, I'd love to see the goals and understand the goals and really think about what they want to do and become and have. But if they're really not at that point yet, then perhaps we can just look at how much money they're bringing in now while they're working and use a top-down approach and look at hey, how much income they have coming in from work now and then deduct some of the things that they're not going to have anymore when they're retired, like 401k contributions, maybe, and their FICA taxes that they're paying now they won't have when they retire. Perhaps they'll have other expenses they're going to go away when they retire. And then they're left over with a number that they're comfortable with living off of now. Perhaps that's a good place to start. And then perhaps they can budget some of the things that they do want to be doing, like traveling or spending time with the grandkids and those other kind of goals that they maybe struggle with originally uh, when we started this conversation. And that's what I've always respected about you, Wes. You're not like the doctor who the patient comes in, real quick examination, runs them out the door. You're more like the financial doctor that's willing to spend the extra time to ask the tough questions so that people really are motivated, excited about retirement and they realize right how what they're doing today, the sacrifices they're making today, are gonna to help them achieve those goals. As long as I've known you, you've never, you've never taken the easy way out. I respect that. No, and, and you know, Dave, in, in this business, it's important to listen to people. It's important to understand what their wishes, their wants, and their goals are. And unfortunately, I find that in our business, so many advisors or brokers just use kind of cookie cutter solutions. And a lot of times those solutions aren't really the, uh, the right solution to somebody's situation. Until you really listen and understand what somebody wants and needs and take the time to know the client, then we can properly help them. But uh, David, hey, don't go away. We're gonna talk more later in the show. And coming up after the break, we're gonna dive into the next two questions in our quiz. We're gonna talk about social security and required distributions. And stay tuned, we'll be right back. fiduciary is someone legally obligated to act in your best interest. Doctors, lawyers, and some financial advisors are fiduciaries, but not all. When you work with Wes Wood and his team at Wood Financial Group, you are working with fiduciaries. They help clients create customized investment portfolios based off their retirement goals. If you're ready to work with a fiduciary, visit RetireTV.com and schedule a free, no obligation conversation with Wes or a Wood Financial Group advisor. Hi, I'm Wesley Wood, host of the Retirement Income Show, and I'm founder and president of Wood Financial Group. And we're a local independent financial services company that specializes in creating custom retirement solutions tailored to meet your particular needs. Visit retiretv.com to learn how we can help you create a customized retirement portfolio. Welcome back to the Retirement Income Show. I'm your host, Wes Wood. Today we're talking about our retirement readiness quiz and answering important questions. Let's talk about social security and required minimum distributions. Do you recognize this guy? Uncle Sam. He giveth and taketh away, doesn't he? And that's so true throughout your life, but it becomes particularly true in two ways when you reach retirement age. 
One, you're eligible to collect Social Security payments, uh, but then you're obligated to pay taxes on your retirement accounts through required minimum distributions. This, these give and take realities affect your retirement finances in major ways. That's why the second and third question on our retirement readiness quiz are, do you have a plan for taking Social Security? And do you have a plan for satisfying RMDs? While the correct answer for, for both of these obviously should be yes, it's naturally just as important to make sure you have the right plan. And that means a plan that's right for you and aligned with your, say it with me now, your retirement goals, which of course you've already identified. In terms of Social Security, the right plan is one that basically answers yes to four additional questions. First, does it ensure that I have start collecting Social Security at the right time? Does it maximize my benefits in every way possible? Does it minimize my tax burden on Social Security? And is it properly aligned with my other sources of retirement income? And of course, there are many important things to consider in answering all of those questions. An advisor who specializes in retirement income can help you make sure you don't miss any of these. And if you're within 10 years of retirement age now, you can start by reaching out to me directly by contacting me at retiretv.com or by calling 855-776-0614. The bottom line is that Social Security might be a more important financial resource than you realize and potentially the hidden key to achieving your retirement goals. But you need to have the right plan. Now, let's talk about required minimum distributions or RMDs. In 2019, the age for taking your first re required minimum distribution was raised from 70 and a half years old to 72 years old. Then last year, the government suspended RMDs due to the coronavirus pandemic. So, what are these pesky things anyway? Well, there's a, there's a funny thing about them. It's the government's way of finally collecting all the taxes they let you defer while you're growing your retirement savings. And starting at the age of 72 years old, you're required by law to start taking minimum distributions from those qualified accounts, your 401ks, your IRAs, your 457 accounts, your 403bs and so on, and then pay taxes on them. And RMDs start at 4%, nearly 4% of your account total, and then they're gonna increase as a percentage every year after that. It's no chump change. The important question is this, have you planned for RMDs? Is your asset allocation generating enough in the form of interest and dividends to satisfy those RMDs without touching your principal? And an income specialist can help you answer that question and many others. Speaking of income, there's just one more question on our retirement readiness quiz, and we're gonna to get to that one shortly. But right now, let's welcome back David Scranton. Welcome back, Dave. Great, uh, great to be here, of course, as usual, Wes. So we talk about Social Security a, a mm -hmm. lot on this show because it's such an important decision. But, you know, if you had to simplify it, uh, you know, how do Social Security or investments really tie together when you're taking Social Security early or mm -hmm. perhaps conversely if you're taking Social Security late? Yeah, well, a lot of times when we run a Social Security analysis for folks, uh, they realize they perhaps need to either wait to take Social Security or take it early. And if somebody says, well, I realize to maximize my Social Security I should wait, but they still want to retire, there's going to be some, some gap years. So if somebody's going to retire at 65 and they're not going to take Social Security until 70, they need to fill that gap for those few years there. So we need to invest the money in a conservative form and fashion to generate enough interest and dividends to where it's covering uh, those, those really those gap years so we're not depleting principal. Uh, adversely, conversely, if somebody retires at 62, maybe because they're just sick of the grind, ready to retire and they have enough money, they perhaps will take Social Security early, but we all know that they're gonna get less for their total life, so they're gonna to need to generate enough interest and dividends to cover the difference from the lack of Social Security and the income that they actually need. So it's investing for income, so they're just spending those interest and dividends, not taking from principal during those very important years. So it sounds like whether you take it early or you take it late, either way you have to coordinate it with your asset allocation uh, and how mm -hmm. much income is coming from other sources. And and you exactly. know, speaking, speaking about income, you know, you're, you're talking about RMDs, mm -hmm. but what do you say to somebody who says, look, I really don't care about leaving my principal intact. I don't need to leave a big legacy. If no. my RMD is 4%, gosh, I can, I can multiply my IRA account by 0 
and I won't deplete it for 25 years. And heck, by then I'll be 97. Right, right. Well, uh, that you know, a lot of people do that. They just do the exact same math that you did. But the problem there that they're not factoring in is things like rising health care costs. You know, how are they going to pay for maybe nursing home needs or increased cost of prescription drugs or increased just cost of health care because it goes up in a very quick fashion? Um, or maybe they just need more income to help adjust for inflation. Because we know that Social Security probably isn't going to increase at the same rate as just normal inflation, the cost of goods and services. So we need to try to preserve that principle to when they need more income later in life. So just by sticking it on the mattress or sticking it in places and just taking from principal every single year uh, can be very dangerous due to really two of those main factors that we definitely want to consider. And obviously RMDs go up as you get older. So mm -hmm. if you live to average life expectancy or beyond, uh, mm -hmm. eventually you're going to have to start dipping into some principal. You, you can't take interest and dividends to satisfy those forever, right? Uh, that, that, that's correct, and if, if you look at the IRS uh, distribution uniform lifetime table, you'll see at uh, age um, 72, you have to take out nearly four, but you extend that out, by the time you get to 85, you're up to nearly 6%, and it even goes all the way out to 115 years old where you have to take out uh, more than half of your money. So it does go up as a percentage every single year as you get older, so you're right, you can't just say 4% for life, because that's not the way it's going to work. It is going to go up every year. Now, we do know that eventually those interest and dividends are not going to be enough to cover the required distribution, but at least we can kind of push that turnaround point, as we call it, later on in life rather than early in life. Yep. Makes sense. And uh, yeah, well, thanks again, Dave. And, and we're going to talk a little bit more later in the show. But coming up, we're going to talk more about one of the most important questions on our retirement readiness quiz. And that's the shift from going from growth to investing for income. We'll be right back. Retirement accounts like 401ks and IRAs are great tools to save for retirement. They offer tax advantages to help keep more money in your pocket. But withdrawing money from your accounts can have a huge impact on your tax liability. Take money from the right account at the right time and you can minimize it. But taking money from the wrong account at the wrong time could result in a big tax burden. If you're not sure what you should do with your 401k in retirement, visit retiretv.com to schedule a free, no obligation conversation with Wes Wood and Wood Financial Group. I'm David Scranton. During my career, I found that most baby boomers have done a great job growing their retirement savings, yet many don't know how to convert their savings into steady income. And that is why I built the Retirement Income Store, to help hardworking Americans preserve their assets and establish steady streams of income. If you're 55 or older, please claim our free Retirement Income Kit, chock full of information you need to know to get steady income during your retirement. Call 866-714-7377 online at theretirementincomestore.com. A fiduciary is someone legally obligated to act in your best interest. Doctors, lawyers, and some financial advisors are fiduciaries, but not all. When you work with Wes Wood and his team at Wood Financial Group, you are working with fiduciaries. They help clients create customized investment portfolios based off their retirement goals. If you're ready to work with a fiduciary, visit retiretv.com and schedule a free, no obligation conversation with Wes or a Wood Financial Group advisor. Welcome back to the Retirement Income Show. I'm your host, Wes Wood, and today we're talking about our retirement readiness quiz. Take a look at this. No airplane pilot would just jump into a plane and take off without doing his pre-flight checklist first. And that's very reassuring to all of us passengers sitting in the, in the seats, right? But by the same token, no one should take off into retirement without making sure that they're absolutely ready for it mentally, emotionally, and financially. And that brings us to the final question of our retirement readiness quiz. Have you made the strategic shift from portfolio growth to retirement income? Now, on some level, everyone knows they need to start generating income from their investments once they've retired, right? But the common misconception is that you should wait until you're already retired to make that shift. 
Some people believe that they should invest for growth right up until retirement day when they're handed that gold watch, which I know not many companies do anymore, but you get my drift. Uh, the reality is that shifting from growth to income is an important step getting ready for retirement. And it's best done during the transitional years. And transitional years are gonna be those 10 or so years before retirement when the kids are grown, you've accumulated some savings, you're almost eligible to take Social Security. And for most people, there are plenty of good reasons to make that shift during this time. And the only reason many don't make this shift is because they do not fully understand that in the investing for income model. They've been led to believe that investing for income means actually sacrificing returns. They believe that they need to keep investing for growth right up to the bitter end in order to build up their retirement nest egg. Well, as my kids would say, and all the kids would say out there, that's just wrong on so many levels. For one thing, sometimes the stock market not only doesn't grow, but it shrinks. This means that investing for growth means investing for the big unknown. Okay, if you're 20 years away from retirement, that's fine. But if you're only five to 10 years before retirement, it can be extremely risky. And the more important thing to understand is that growth and return and growth are not, syn are not synonymous. Return is the sum of two things, growth and income. Growth is measured by capital appreciation, and income comes in the form of interest and dividends. By investing directly for interest and dividends, you may get a bit less return, a, a bit less total return than you would continue to invest for capital gains, but you also reduce the risk of a major loss. That's because investing for in bonds and bond-like instruments in an income strategy are designed to protect you from market volatility and to guarantee your income return regardless of market conditions. And even better, there are certain dividend strategies that you can use to keep growing your portfolio organically through strategic reinvestment. And those can be even more effective when the market falls. The bottom line is, that's a strategy that's not only serves you well in retirement, but it's a strategy that makes you get ready for it as well. Now, discover for yourself today by reaching out to me directly at retiretv.com or by calling 855-776-0614, and we can make sure you're on the right path to a successful retirement. Now, let's welcome back Davis Grant one last time. Welcome back, Dave. Thanks, Wes. Wait a minute, though. Are you trying to tell me that when your team members retire, you no longer buy them a gold watch? I mean, that's so <laughs> wrong on so many levels, Wes. I'm sorry. It, it sure is, yeah, yeah. No, no go watch for the team members when they retire. But you know what the funny thing is, is that when I talk to my clients that are retired, they said they don't even watch anymore because they don't care what time it is. They can sleep as long as they want. They can do whatever they want to do. So why, why bother giving a go watch away, right? That's a great point. That's a great point. And you know, but what, what's also wrong on so many levels is when somebody mm -hmm. comes into your office and says, well, Wes, I've got, let's say a million dollars. I need 4% yep. of that per year for income. Let's call it 40,000 mm -hmm. a year. But I know for the first 20 years of the century, the market's average over 6% return. So mm -hmm. if the market's averaging 6% and I'm only taking out 4% a year for income, I should be okay 20 years later, correct? Uh, yes, I hear that often. Uh, but unfortunately, that's not the case when you're pulling money out of a portfolio. Even though the market may have averaged 6% return, it's not, as we all know, it's not 6% year over year over year. The market falls, goes up and down, and think about this. Going back 20 years or so, even a little further, if you invested a million dollars and, and the market started dropping and you're taking $40,000 a year out of the portfolio, well, what's happening? You're now having to liquidate more shares from that portfolio in order to get to that $40,000 distribution. And it's something called reverse dollar cost averaging, which can actually be devastating and can cannibalize a portfolio over time. But if you invest for income, instead of liquidating principal when the market's down, investing for income and you're just spending the interest and dividends, even if some of those shares are maybe down in value, we don't need to liquidate because we're just spending what the income is generating. You're exactly right. Sequence of returns has a, a big deal to do with it when you're taking money from a portfolio. I remember you showed me a stress test you'd done one time for a client who retired in the year 2000. Mm -hmm. And because the market yep. was underwater for 13 years from 2013, Yep. I remember that that person had just about half of their money left 13 mm -hmm. years later. Even though the market mm -hmm. recovered, they didn't recover because that it spent that entire time underwater. So 
So that's right. You know, I know you tell people now as a result of that that you don't have to be anti-growth. You can still get some mm -hmm. growth, provided that you make income the priority and growth is the secondary goal. Correct. That's exactly right. Even those folks that are in those transition years, 10, 5, 10 years or so from retirement, that's really a good time to shift to income. But you don't have to sacrifice the uh, what we call the organic growth in the portfolio and see the portfolio potentially build over time. Because guess what? You can take those interest and dividends, maybe from some good value-based dividend paying stocks, and even when the market's going down some, you can just take those dividends and reinvest it. Uh, I mean, I'm in my, I'm 40, 41 years old now, 41 years old, and uh, I have a lot of my money in income. And you're probably looking at me like saying, well, why would you have so much in income? Because if you're reinvesting all the time, even when the market's down with those dividends, what it can do is provide a lot more income in the future for when I choose to retire one day. So even though at your age, it could be okay to have growth as a priority and income yep. second, there's still lots of good reasons to have income as the priority even at age 41. Uh, absolutely, and, I, and I'm not somebody that says everybody needs to be invested for income by any stretch of the imagination. If somebody is in their 20s and 30s and even 40s and they're not gonna retire for you know, many, many years, they can take the risk and growth. But before retirement, it's a good idea to make that transition. But Dave, thanks again for joining us today. Of course. I'm Westwood, the income guy. Thanks for watching. And if you have any questions about anything we've covered on today's show, please reach out to me at retiretv.com or by calling 855-776-0614. Be sure to tune in next week.